After Effects, we're going to open a new composition. New composition, 1920 by 1080, square pixels, 24 frames, uh, resolution full, 10 seconds, looking good, hit OK. Open up your title and action safe. We're going to create a new layer. Let's hit new solid. And we'll change that to black. Let's hit OK. We're going to name this layer, change the name of the layer by hitting return. I'm going to type in floor. I'm going to duplicate the layer, command C, command V. Hit return, name this wall. And then I'm going to turn both of these into 3D layers. And then I'm going to go to my effects and presets. And I'm going to type in grid. And I'm going to drop a grid on the wall. And I'm going to drop a grid on the floor. Okay, so uh, the next thing we're going to do, we're going to go into the floor settings, open up the position by hitting P, and I'm going to turn off the wall layer for a moment. I'm going to, excuse me, not position, I'm sorry. We're going to make it rotation, so hit R on your keyboard, and we'll open up the rotation, and you'll see that by moving the first X rotation, I'm going to turn off the wall here. The X rotation, I'm going to, whoops, I'm going to set it to negative, negative 90. And I grab the, the Z and I push it down so it looks kind of like a floor. And I will close it and lock that layer. Turn on my wall layer and open up position. And then if I scroll right over the top here, see where I scroll over the blue arrow, it turns to a Z. We take that and I just push that to the left so it's kind of moving backwards in space. Um, I'm going to change the background color of my um, comp here by going comp, comp settings. Right now it's set to this blue. Let's just make it black. Okay, so we have sort of a little mock wall and a little mock floor. Let's come that up. <clears throat> I'm then going to go into my text tool and I'm just going to type out uh, one through five. So I'm going to type one. Uh, bump that up a little bit. Zoom in on that area. I'm holding down the shift bar to get a little hand, and you can see I can move my down there. So I'm going to select the text layer and I'm going to make sure that the anchor point is in this area here. So I'm going to hit the Y on my keyboard and hover over the anchor point, or the anchor point, and you'll see that the little arrow turns to an arrow with a square. So I hold that and I move it to bottom one there. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is duplicate this. change it to 2. Oops. And you can see that when I did that, the anchor point is going to move a little bit, so I'm just going to hit my Y again and adjust it. Oops. Like so. And I'm just going to repeat that process. Command C, Command V. Change 
to the three. Sorry about that. Let's see, command V. Change that to four. Hit Y on the keyboard, move the active point out a little bit. Time. Five. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my one layer and copy that. Command C, Command V, and move that up to here, and then move the one over here. <clears throat> and you'll see towards the end, the reason we're going to have one twice is because we want to make this look like it loops seamlessly. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to fool us, fool the viewer into thinking this one is the same as this one. And you'll see if, towards the end there, it'll, it'll probably make a little more sense. But, um, okay, I can close that. I want to align these by going Window, Align. And this is just, just like uh, Illustrator. We're going to align those. And then we will distribute them to the center. That looks pretty good. Okay. Then what we're going to do is we're going to turn all these layers into 3D layers by going like that. Okay. Now what I want to do, what I want to do is go to the camera, active camera and change that to custom view. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just start to take these numbers, these layers, and distribute them in different spaces Push this one back here, then maybe pull it up. Take this one, maybe push it back a little bit. Bring this up again. Damn it. Feels pretty good. Let's take a go back to our active camera and see how they all look. Okay. That feels pretty good. Move this one back a little bit. Okay. So then we're going to lock those. <clears throat> the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go up to our layer. A couple more steps. We're going to go to uh, create a new null object. And I want to make sure the anchor point is in the center. So I'm going to hit A on my keyboard and change the anchor point to 50 and 50. And then after I do that, 
see now that the anchor point's right here. We change the null layer to a 3D layer. We go back to our key, uh, excuse me, we go back to our effects and presets, and I type in separate X, Y, Z. I start to type in the word separate. I see separate X, Y, Z opens up, and I drop that onto my null layer. Good. Fix that. And lastly, we're going to create a new camera. It doesn't really matter which one we choose. Um, why don't we choose, we're going to choose a 35 millimeter MM. Okay, let's hit OK, looking good. And I'm going to take my null, uh, excuse me, my camera, <clears throat> and I'm going to link it to the null by grabbing what's called this pick whip here, drag it on top of the null. Beautiful, now I lock my camera. And the only thing I'm going to be working with <clears throat> is the effects separate XYZ position. As you can see, because I added this um, effect of XYZ position to the null, the position turns red now, which means we have this <clears throat> excuse me, little piece of code in here, which basically is saying the position of this null is going to be controlled by the XYZ and inadvertently the camera will then be controlled by the position of the null. So what we're going to do is we're going to approach this like one of those uh, a first person shooter game. Um, we're going to try and get each of the numbers to be in the center where the null is. So I'm going to just keyframe both the X, Y, and Z. I'm going to move first X it's going to be on black so we have nothing on the screen now I'm going to be turning off the floor and the wall towards the end there and then we're going to go up to about one second hit OK I'm going to keyframe my X, Y, and Z and I'm going to move setting up the position of having the one okay. okay. When we get to one full second, we're going to pause at one second and 12 frames. I keyframe that again. And then at two seconds, we're going to have, we're going to move to the word two. So I'm going to keyframe that. Just move around a little bit until I get my two in place. Gonna go to two, 12 seconds, two sec, excuse me, two seconds, twelve frames. That's gonna hold. Then we're gonna go to three full seconds. Three frame, and then find our three. And I believe that was there. It is.
character to three seconds and 12 frames. Pause it. And we go to four seconds. Keyframe it. Find the word four. Four seconds, 12 frames, keyframe again. Four, five seconds, keyframe. Look for the word five, there it is up top there. Looking for, let's see where this is going. And we go five seconds, 12 frames. Click. And it is six full seconds. And I was going to loop it on one, but I think instead I'm going to delete that one and just have it go to a black blank screen. There we go. So then what we'll do is we will trim the comp. Well, first we're going to turn off the wall and the floor, eyeball, and we should test it before we trim it. So I'm going to hit space on the keyboard and have it flag. And you can see when we go to five, we can still see a little bit of three. So the way to avoid that is after we go to four, we can unlock our three layer, click it, I'm going to hold the option key and hit the right curly bracket to trim off this part of it. So that way we won't see it when we go to five. Okay, so that is uh, moving in Z space using a null object, attaching the effect separate XYZ position to it, and then linking the camera to that null object. See you in the next tutorial.